Good Hope. Good morning, Good Hope. Good morning to all of you who have tuned in into the virtual space to watch us on this morning. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Testing one, two, testing one. Test. Check. Amen. Amen and God bless. Good morning, good hope, and good morning to all of you who have tuned in in the virtual space on this morning. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Go ahead in the sanctuary and in the virtual space. Go ahead and set the atmosphere. Put your hands together. Open up your mouth. Give God some praise. Let's usher in his presence this morning. For we come for no other reason but to praise him. For he is truly worthy to be praised. Your Bible says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. That's Psalms 90 and 17. We're going to prepare ourselves now, people of God, for praise and worship. Good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I don't know what it means to you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, mid turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, mending broken hearts, I worship you, I worship you, can you lift your voice and sing with me now, way maker, way Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, 
I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. How many of you know he is a way maker, a miracle worker? You want to see a miracle, just look at me. And I know I ain't the only one in here he had to redo over. Ain't that right, Reverend? I know I ain't the only one in here. But I thank him. Can I take y'all on to church? Come by here, my Lord. Come by. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Oh, oh, Lord, I need you to come by here. Come on by if you can't stay long. Come by here. Come on by if you can't stay long. Come by here. Come on by if you can't stay Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Can I tell y'all who? My mama prayed. Had me on her mind, she was weary. Took the time and prayed for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. The preacher prayed. Come on in here. Took time. I'm so, I'm so glad, I'm so, well, Jesus is on the main line, tell him, I know that Jesus is on, I'm so glad. Come on, we're going to do the church thing. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it. This little. I'm. Woo. There's a storm on the ocean, and it's moving, moving my way. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will. Oh, y'all know it. Come on, do it like we used to do. Oh, drift away. Drift away, moving 
my way well if your soul's not anchored in Jesus you will surely drift away come on put them hands together for me good morning let's wake up now and get ready for the word of God uh, he will, yes, he will. God will, yes, he will. All you do is call him, yes, he Call him in the morning, yes, he will. Call him in the noonday. Call him in the midnight. And can't nobody do you, yes, he Can't nobody do you like him. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a my everything. Oh, yes, he is. My mother prayed for me. Y'all all right? Had me on her mind. Took the time and I'm so glad. I'm just so glad. I'm so glad she, I'm so glad she, I'm so glad she, I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad, I'm so glad she prayed for me. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about y'all, what kind of week you didn't have, but I'm glad today is Sunday. Not that I had to wait till I got to the church, but it's good to praise him with some saints that love the Lord. Anybody in here love the Lord? Anybody really love the Lord? Has he really been good to you? Can y'all do me a favor? Y'all just help praise God with me? Can we just take a few minutes? Can we take a few minutes to give him some? Come on, you get up when you're ready. Y'all can get up whenever y'all are ready. Listen, when I think about Jesus, what he done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can. Oh, Amen. Good morning. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Bless the Lord. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Good morning. It truly is an honor to be in the presence in the house of the Lord one more Sunday morning. We are in the seventh month, the month of completion. And for that, we thank the Lord because he didn't have to do it, not because of who we were, but because of who he is. He's a mighty good God. He's done a lot for us up to this point. And we thank him for all that he's going to do from this point forward. Standing all over the building as we approach the throne of grace on one accord. All hearts humble, eyes closed, and hearts lifted up to Christ as we approach the throne on one accord. Eternal God, our Father. Father, right now we come before you just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, Lord. All that you are preparing to do, Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues, it just wouldn't be enough to say thank you, Lord. Lord, you've done so much, Lord. We weren't worthy of the things that you've done, Lord. But because of who you are, you look beyond all of our faults and saw our needs, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, for covering those on our sick and shut-in list, Lord. Lord, you know what they stood in the need of. You made them, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord, for the healing, Lord, for the deliverance, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing for them, Lord. Now, Lord, we have those that are watching live, Lord, that have needs as well, Lord. Meet them at the point of their needs, Lord. You know what they stand in the need of, Lord. 
We thank you right now, Lord, for our pastor and our leading lady, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for covering them, Lord, and keeping them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord. We thank you for watching over each and every one of us, Lord, throughout the week, Lord. And then waking us up, Lord, with all full activities of our limbs, Lord. For that we say thank you, Lord. For you opened our eyes and we could see, Lord. You gave us ears and we could hear this morning, Lord. You gave us hands and we could touch, Lord. You gave us feet and we were able to walk, Lord. And for that we don't take that for granted, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue to cover those, Lord, that are in bereavement, Lord, that are grieving, Lord, the loss of loved ones, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that you are a comforter, Lord. We ask that you meet each and every one of them at the point of their needs, Lord. And, Lord, we ask you continue to cover the students, Lord, as they're out this summer, Lord. Continue to touch their minds, Lord, and keep them safe from all her harm and danger, Lord. And as we enter back in another month into school, Lord, continue to cover them, Lord, their minds, and keep them safe, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you right now, Lord, for your spiritual, your mental, your physical, financial, and emotional blessings. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Continue to stand all over the building as we read the Declaration of Faith together. You can find it on the back of your bulletin. I believe in God all together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, but continue to praise and worship. Amen. Bless the Lord. Sing it like you know. He's worthy. I thought you'd been up by now. I'm going to give you another chance to get up and get in this thing here. Praise him. Have he been good to you? If I had 10,000 tongues, somebody help me praise him. Call his name Jesus. Call his name again for me now. G. My midnight keeper Jesus. I like to call him 
Jesus. Some people call him Jehovah Jireh. But I like to call him Jesus. Jesus, blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be. Blessed Lord, our Savior, we thank you today for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us from the rocking of our cradles up until this present moment. You've been our present help. You've been our constant guide. You've been all our all and all. And we say thank you. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you come now and that you, the Heavenly Father, will Hold me in the hollow of your hand. Anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Lord, we pray that you bless each and every one that's under the sound of my voice. Those who are watching in virtual world, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that we feel you on the inside in order that we might be able to be changed on the outside. We ask, oh God, that you just come now and have thine own way. Keep us to heaven and Father as we travel down the roads. Keep us to heaven and Father as we go out and as we come in. Have thine own way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're able to do anything but fail. So come now, my gracious God. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' magnificent name we do pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He put food on your table, clothes on your back. Reasonable portion of your health and your strength. Somebody's in the hospital this morning and can't praise it. Somebody is in the psych ward and can't praise him. Somebody, somebody somewhere can't praise him for some reason. But here you are. <laughs> and you ought to give him praise because the next moment is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. But we just say thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy right now. Amen, amen, and amen. Man, we thank God for his presence and we thank God for your presence. Amen. And together we can praise the Lord in spite of. We can praise the Lord like we've never praised him before. Whether we have a lot or whether we have small, we can still praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about the fact that Arthritis didn't stop me this morning. <laughs> I'm glad about the fact that heart disease didn't stop me this morning. All right, I'm glad about the fact that cancer didn't stop me this right, morning. Reverend. I'm glad about the fact that while I'm on my way to church, amen, a stray bullet didn't stop me this morning. So I have a reason to praise the Lord. And if you don't want to praise him, get out of my way. <laughs> if you don't want to praise him, somebody hold my mule. Do I have a witness? I need you to understand that a noisy church, a praising church, is a pleasing church in the eyes of our Lord. Why? Because when praises go up, how many of you know blessings will come down? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Giving, giving up reverence to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, recognizing all those who are in their prospective places of authority and those who are the proclaimers of the word who are here in the ministers. The mothers, Mother Johnson, amen, and Mother, Mother Emeritus Johnson and all the mothers and certainly the deacons and the ushers that stand on the door, uh, the, music, the minister of music, 
uh, the media ministry. We thank God for him and for them. And then last but not least, we thank God for the lady of the house. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. It is good to see Sister Tanisha here this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We just thank God for what he's doing in the lives of his children. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord, and I did not try to hold you long. Amen. But I invite your attention to uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. And let's go to chapter 1 of Galatians. Chapter 1 of Galatians. And I believe we'll start there around the sixth verse. So, Paul's letter, Paul's epistle to the Galatians, chapter 1. When you have located it, would you please stand? Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. God bless you. Here you find written there these words, and I'm coming from the King James Version, Paul has his letter, and he writes it to the Galatians in, um, in a way that he needed them to understand something that was going on, amen? And he says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But uh, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I have, so I say now and again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than he that have received, let him be accursed. Number ten says, "For, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men?" For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I, I want to go on. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God already blessed. Amen. You may be seated. For the moment that we have together, I want to preach from the subject, don't distort the gospel. All right. Don't distort the gospel. Many people think that if they come to church, that if they tithe, uh, that if they visit the sick, that everything is all right with them and with God. But if we take a look behind the veil of their lives, we'll find out that they are living a distorted life because they are following a distorted mindset concerning the gospel. And you may be asking, Pastor, what you talking about? Well, we'll sit here for just a few minutes and I'll let you know what we are talking about. Why? Because the gospel, which is the good news, is really misunderstood by a lot of folk who call themselves a true child of God. There was a study done about 20 years ago by a religious organization called the Burner Research Group. And that group conducted the study on beliefs and salvation. And it said, it said that 
uh, uh, four out of ten adults, that's 37 percent, knew what it mean by the gospel or uh, <laughs> the good news. Then, on the other hand, uh, 34% of them inaccurately had the perception of what the gospel is and how we should follow the gospel. While really, three out of ten did not have an answer for what is the gospel or what is the good news. Yet and still, the study, the study concluded that only 60% correctly identified at least one of the meanings that goes into the expression, the gospel or the good news. My brothers and my sisters, in the past 30 years, there has been a proliferation of good news or new gospels. In other words, folk are following some other gospel, some as the new age gospel or the new age belief system. And they are rooted, these, these, uh, these beliefs really are rooted, amen, in the eastern uh, mysticism such as Hinduism. Others are based on pop psychology than they are on the gospel. I don't have to tell you, I don't have to tell you how church have changed post her uh, post pandemic. I, I don't have to tell you uh, that the numbers of physical bodies in the, the church is down. And everybody is saying there's a new way to worship, and I don't I don't disagree with that. There is a new a new way to worship, but my my problem is is that folks still don't worship. <laughs> Do I have a witness? A a a amen. The pandemic is waning out and going uh, another direction from us, and yet we'll go to the mall, we'll go to the club. Uh, we'll go here, we'll go there. Uh, but when it comes down to sitting down in the temple, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> and really what it means and what it boils down to is that we are distorting the gospel. Paul writes this letter. Paul writes this letter to the Galatians simply because there was something going on in the body of Christ. And the Galatians, the Galatians, the Galatians had something going on right there in the midst. There had been uh, an infiltration, if you will, of something in the spirit that should not have been in the body of Christ. When you look at the Galatians, you find out that they were quick-tempered folk. They were impulsive folk. Uh, they may have been hospitable, but yet they were fickle folk. <laughs> if I had to depend on someone who lived in Galatia, amen, to come to church, I'd have to gear myself up to be able to deal with some evil spirits deal with some contrary spirits. Well, that sounds like us today. You don't come to church. You, 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 you should, but you don't come to church expecting that everybody is going to be, amen, in the same spirit, on the same mindset. Why? Because you don't know what they left at home. You don't know what they had to do to come to church. And the Galatian, the Galatian believers had a lot pending against them. They received Paul with uh, uh, enthusiastic joy. And then, on the other hand, uh, they suddenly turned on him. There were folk in the congregation called Judasizers. 
Amen. And Judaizers had gone among the gone among the Galatians, claiming that Jewish law was binding up uh, the Christian. And if you if you listen if you listen attentively, here in 2023, there are people who will tell the very elect that church binds up your life. And oftentimes, the way we live sometimes, we show them that, yeah, my schedule, my agenda is being interrupted because I got to come to church. My child, my child, my grandchild have to miss a practice on Sunday. And I can't come. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Amen. So the Judaizers wasn't just back then. The Judaizers is now. They had a form of worship, <laughs> but was despising the power thereof. Uh, the Judaizers was telling the Christians, Amen. Yet there is a God, and Jesus is the Messiah, but claiming that that, that salvation must nevertheless be obtained by the works of the law. Woo! Y'all get it when you get home. If you read the entire book of Romans, the entire letter of Romans, you'll see that, that, that Paul brought it home very ele elegantly that the law can't hold you, that the law can't save you. That the law can't heal you. And the Judaizers in Galatia and around the world said, it's all right that you, that you honor Jesus. It's all right that you worship Jesus. But don't forget the Mosaic law. What you saying, preacher? Well, it's all right. You, 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 yeah, we're in a new, new dispensation of the New Testament. But I need you to understand that you can't forget the Old Testament and think that you got it all going on with the New Testament. You got to take both of them in order to live a Christian life the way uh, the Bible says, the way that God is inspiring us to do. And yet here the Judaizers get into the church among the believers in Galatia, in uh, Ephesus and other places and they say that you're listening to Paul. You're listening to the preacher. And yet he is not one of the twelve. Yet he is not one of the apostles. And he's saying, they're saying that what Paul is teaching and preaching is not the whole story. I'm going to get to it after a while. The whole story is that you need to understand for yourself what the word of God says about Jesus, his will, and his way. So Paul gets, Paul gets the message. Paul gets the news that this thing is happening in and among the believers. I understand. I understand how he felt. Because as a pastor uh, of Brown and 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 and, and other folk, Amen. I, I sometimes I sit and I have a conversation with the Lord, and I'm asking Him, Lord, where did we go wrong? What did we do? How do we come back uh, from this place of stagnation? How do we come back? from this place of staleness that we do not understand what is required of us. And I'd be like Paul sometimes. The scripture says that Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon. I marvel. What do you mean, Paul? Amen. In, in, in the Greek understanding of that word mar uh, marvel, Paul is saying, I am astounded. I am bewildered. How you have turned from 
the word of God and how you have distorted the word of God. Paul's astonishment is not that false teachers exist and haters of the gospel exist, but that the church was following them. <laughs> Good God Almighty. You need to understand those who turn their backs on the church and the church's agenda through Jesus Christ, amen, fall under this category. And Paul says, I'm marveled, I'm, I'm astonished, I'm shocked. Good God Almighty, the great-granddaughter was acting up yesterday. Uh, she had a short temper tantrum. And you know how you have to wonder sometimes, what do I do? And I, I got a sister who deals with child care, Sister Kaya. And she said when she comes across a child like that, she just let him go on. And this girl went to hollering and screaming and bouncing up off the floor and climbing up under the chairs. And we just sat there and watched her. Time now. I said, let me see how long she's going to keep this up. Back in the day, we would have had, we would have, well, huh? <laughs> and I, I, I heard, I heard the leading lady tell her, "I am disappointed in your actions." And and, and when she heard that, she just bawled even the more, huh? And that's what Paul is telling. The Galatians, I am disappointed in your actions. He was astonished. He was surprised at their actions. A amen. But, 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 but he understood uh, that there's going to be some things underlying courage that will get in the believers, that will get in the body of the church, that will turn things around. Amen. So he was surprised about that. But yet, he was surprised more so that the people in the church were so easily misled. In a few, in a few, in a few things, I want us to consider this morning about what Paul is saying. He gives us some principles concerning the word of God, uh, the gospel. The good news. The first thing I want you to look at is that the gospel, the good news, needs no addition. Amen. It needs no addition. The false teachers, the Judaizers, amen, did not openly deny the gospel message. They only wanted to improve the gospel message. By adding it, by adding to it, uh, by adding new requirements, by adding new ceremonies and new standards, they wanted to add to it in order that it fit their lifestyle. That it order, in order for it to fit their agenda. I'm here to tell somebody, if your agenda is not upset by the gospel of Christ, you ought to throw that agenda away. Hmm. It is easy for, uh, for them to look at things and want to add to it. It's that if we believe in Jesus Christ, but we have something wonderful to add to what already we ought to believe. And that's what the Judaizers and the false teachers say. Everything is good in the gospel, but we want to add to it just so that we can live comfortably in our way of life. Do I have a witness? And what's applied here is that faith that the Galatian believers had, amen, it's not sufficient. Something was more, had to be added more to what they believed. I don't need nothing added to my faith other than the fact that my faith <laughs> Good God Almighty, it's the substance of things hoped for 
and the evidence of things not seen. Something more plays into how uh, we and they want to live and pass it off as being a Christian. We pass it off. We pass it off as being a Christian. And, 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 and we justify it by this phrase, God knows my heart. He knows my intention. As long as I pay my tithe. I'm all right. Do I have a witness? As long as I, I, I do what I need to do and then break off the Lord's just a little piece, amen, I can still be called a faithful Christian. The devil is a lie. Do I have a witness? Amen. The devil is a They viewed the difference in the gospel Amen. And said that, that, that if I add this to my teaching, then I could do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to let you know what Paul was saying. That, that is a distorted gospel. And the word distort is translated and means transforming into something of an opposite character. That's heavy. When you transform, when you, dis, when you distort the gospel and live any kind of way, you are living an, a, ha, an opposite character. In other words, uh, good God Almighty, you got two personalities. And two personalities will struggle internally with one another. Do I have a witness? A a amen, amen. And when two personalities, two spirits war against one another inside you, amen, you are distorted. Back in the day, they called you flicked. Why are you afflicted? Because you don't know which way you want to go. Why are you afflicted? Because you don't know what gospel to believe. Why? Because you ain't picking up the word of God and reading the word of God and studying the word of God. Amen. Because you got two things going on on the inside. Do I have a witness? Amen. And we need to be cognizant of the fact that as we live a distorted life, following a distorted gospel, folk are watching us. And I'm here to let you know that the devil and the world knows exactly how a true Christian is supposed to act like. They know exactly that if you carry a title in the church, they, ought to, they, they know exactly how you ought to live. That's why I tell folk, amen, and tell preachers especially, that you got to live at a higher standard of life. Do I have a witness? And, and truth of the matter is, is that I can't hang with everybody. Hmm? Everybody don't understand the life of the minister. And, and truth be told, sometimes the minister don't understand the life that they were supposed to live. Amen. You got to be committed. You got to be dedicated. You got to be sold out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anybody sold out? Anybody know that they know that they know? Amen. I need you to understand that the Bible gives us to know that uh, your spiritual, your spiritual way of living, your Christian way of living is being seen by others. And if others want to pick up the mantle that you're living now, amen, and follow in that, I need you to understand real good now, amen, that their spiritual blood and their distorted Christian walk is on your hands. Take that home. And you will have to give an account in glory. Distorted gospel, distorted people, Distorted way of life. 
The next thing and probably the last thing, distorted gospel and living is a distorted life. Amen. Is a curse. It's in there. If you're following a distorted gospel, if you're living a distorted life, you're living a cursed life. There it is. But if, even if we or an angel from heaven preach my pe preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. He had to say it twice. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have already received, let him be accursed. Paul is saying that the real problem of another gospel is not only that it is a bad idea, but also it's not only a bad idea, but it lacks power. Because it is a fake, amen, and it is dangerous. And those who distort the gospel message and live spiritually distorted lives are rejecting the authority of Christ and therefore are cursed. I didn't say it. The word said it. You're living a cursed life. And I don't know about you. I don't want nothing over my head telling me that this, my blessings from the Lord is blocked. I don't want to live a cursed life. But here it is. Not only will you live a cursed life, but it becomes generational. Your children will live a cursed life. Your children's children will live a cursed life. Why? Because of a distorted understanding and perception of the word of God. That's why folk turn away from the church because there is a misperception and the perception comes when they see you who are called a Christian act any other way than what the Bible I'm heavy tonight, today. Amen, I'm heavy, I'm heavy. I don't even want to say this. I don't even want, want to preach this this morning, but God said, here it is, give it to him. Amen. A, distor a, a distorted gospel uh, put folk in bondage. It causes entanglement, and it could not bring justification. A distorted gospel uh, can't bring freedom. It makes Christ of no, pro of no profit. It makes the death of Christ, which is the very essence of the gospel, and in addition to providing no blessing whatsoever, is put, we will put folk, amen, under a curse and cause God to be angered against us. In his letter, in his letter to the Romans, uh, Paul said it like this, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation, and it delivers to deliverance everyone who believes. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. John, John came along in his gospel, and he said it like this. He said, the good news and the gospel of Christ, amen, is not distorted, but the gospel is like this. John says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things that were made was made by him, and without him was any, was any no, nothing made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That ain't distorted. Do I have a witness? John went on to explain. He says, Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Amen. I'm not talking, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about a, a, a physical death. Amen. But I'm talking about spiritual death. You are transformed from death to life 
And then I, I like what he says. I, I, I'm saying in John for just a minute. He says, if you continue, Jesus said, in my words, and then, ye be, then you shall be my disciple. Stop the distortion. Stop <laughs> oh, the falseness. Stop things from being distorted in your life. Stop things from being distorted in your children's life. And go back to basics. Understand that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Huh? I turned the book over the Psalms, and in the book of Psalm, David tells us something about the word and the true living word of God. He said, his word is a lamp unto my feet. And his word, amen, is a light unto my path. His word is my light and my salvation. His word is medicine when I'm sick. His word is my health and my strength. His word is peace in a time of sorrow. His word is my hope for tomorrow. His word soothes all my doubts and calms all my fears. And I know that there's somebody here, amen, who understands when folks say, good God Almighty, at the word, good God of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. I want to be the one who's listening to his word. I want to be one, amen, who will sit at the foot of Jesus and meditate on his word. Is there anybody here who feels like I do? <laughs> that you can take everything away from me. <laughs> take my home Take my car, take my job. You can even take my family. But good God Almighty, don't take the word from me because the word is found in Jesus and the word walks among us and the word lifts you up and the word gives us peace in the midst of the storm. And the word gives us hope when we're despaired. And the word brings you comfort and peace in the midst of bereavement. The word lifts you up. The word raises you up. The word will bring you up. The word will bring you out. The word will make sure that everything turns out all right. I don't know about you, but I want to be like that man that Jesus cleaned up in the, in the cemetery. Good God Almighty, the word say that after he met Jesus and after Jesus showed him the way, and put some word on him. The word say that they found him. Good God Almighty. Clothed and sitting in his right mind. But good God Almighty. Here's the crust of it. That after he was cleaned up. After all the chains were gone. After he knew who this man was. He ran to the boat and got in the boat with Jesus and said, Jesus, I want to go with you. Jesus, no one ever spoke anything in my life, but all you did was say a word. I'm reminded now of the disciples when Jesus got in the boat and they had been fishing all night long 
and Jesus wanted to borrow the boat. And the man said, good God Almighty, here we are. We've been out on the water all oh, night long, long. <laughs> and haven't caught anything. Yeah. Jesus looked at him and said, cast out a little further. Yeah. Cast, out cast out and cast your net in the deep waters. Anybody know you sometimes you got to go further out and deeper down uh -huh. in order for God to bless you like you want to do. Say yes. Yeah. But I heard the word say that the disciples looked up at Jesus and said, At your word. At your word. At your word. At your word. I launch out yeah. into the deep. Oh, and the rest of the story goes that they had more shit, more fish than they do knew what to do with. Say yes. I need his word. I want his word. Yeah. Don't distort his word. Yeah. I don't want a distorted life. Mm. I want a life yeah. that is word, 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 yeah. word, 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 word. I want the word of God yeah. to come over me. I want the word of God to go before me. I want the word of God to go behind me. I need the word of God to walk beside me. Why? Because when I'm in his word, everything, 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 everything will be all right. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Yes to his will. Yeah. Yes to his way. Yeah. Yes to his word. Yes. Yes. At your word, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When I'm lonely, I need your word. Woo, when I hurt, I need your word. Hallelujah. When I'm lost, I need your word. Oh, when I don't have no friends, I need your word. Late in the midnight hour, while I'm walking the floor because of what's going on in life, I need your word. Why? Because your word tells me why I'm rounding up. And amen. And while I'm walking the floor, your word tells me that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Yes, and this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Say yes. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm living in the word of God. I got to have it. Put it on me. Wrap it around me. Because I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. And I'm tangled up in his word. Say yes. Say yes. Don't distort his word. Don't distort the gospel. Live a life that's indicative of the word of God. Hallelujah. Standing all over the building. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. The doors of the church are open. If you want to get close and to the Lord, spirit hear his word. If you want him to come into your life, pick up his word. Study his word. Yes, Eat his word. Lord, yes, and he will direct your path. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Spirit speaks to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. And the answer will be yes, Lord, yes. 
You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. Can my answer still mighty and strong so fight this battle for me and help my unbelief so I can tell all my friends you won again. that you have won again let your power Glad to have you with us. Say hello to your love. Glad to have you with us this morning this way. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, overseer, Reverend Raymond Terrell, his lovely wife, leading Lady Barbara Terrell, and the entire Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, we thank God for your presence being with us on this morning. And we pray that you felt the love. We pray that you were encouraged and inspired through the word of God. We pray that you'll feel comfortable enough and the spirit will lead you to join us. Amen. And you'll become a part of us. Amen. Amen. But we just thank you for your presence and thank you for worship with us. Uh, for we are the church that sits on the hill where hope in Christ never dies. Never dies. Never dies. 
So we thank God for your presence today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. At this time, people of God, we want to uh, take heed to the things to remember. Uh, we do have our Bible Academy conference call this Thursday at 7. Uh, there you see the calling number as well as the conference code there in your bulletin. We also want to remain mindful that we do have our church anniversary receipt donation of $144 per member or family. Our speaker will be Reverend Dr. James G. Yazoo of Yazoo, Mississippi. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. We also have our effectual prayer call. We'll resume the first Saturday in June and will be every first and third Saturday. And for those of you who would like to join us with the prayer on those first and third Saturdays, it's the same call-in number and code that we use for our Thursday Night Bible Academy Conference. Amen. We also uh, ask for a Ruth Ladybug Memorial Foundation is accepting school supplies. The box is located in the vestibule. And I have a list here of the things that uh, you all can purchase to put in for the uh, school supply. Uh, crayons, wood pencils, glue sticks, bar erasers, cap erasers, and the list goes on and on and on. And I believe, is there a list out there in the best of you as well? There, there is a list out there. So those who can and will, please take a, a look at that list and purchase something on that list to put it in the box because we want to be a blessing uh, to the children as they prepare to go back to school in August. Amen? Amen. Our thought for the week uh, is develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. That reference scripture is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. I don't want to oversight those on our special prayer request list. Please let us continue to pray for those who are listed. Uh, those who are in the sanctuary, you do see those names on your bulletin. Those in the virtual space, it streams across the bottom of the screen. Please take heed to those names and remember them in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Oh, also, before I sit down, we do have a card. Amen. Those who give of their time are truly generous. To the Good Hope family, Tanisha and I just want to say thank you. And please accept this small token to continue the upkeep of our house of hope. Love the Johnsons. It says just saying thank you doesn't seem enough. I hope you know how appreciated you really are. Amen. 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 And we thank you and God bless you. And you all continue to enjoy one another. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Amen. To our, our guests this morning, we want you to understand that we are delighted and excited about the fact that God laid it in your spirit to come uh, to this little church where hope in Christ never dies. We hope and pray that something that has been said or done that will cause you to once again remember us. Amen. And come back and be a part of this wonderful family. Amen. Amen. Lady Terrell has, uh, would like to have a meeting with all the ladies to, uh, immediately after the benediction. The FMJ, amen, uh, the FMJ, immediately after uh, the benediction, amen. Continue to pray for Sister Gamble <coughs> and the Matthew family as they've already had one service uh, for her mother in Washington. And the lady and I will be leaving uh, about 1 or 2 o'clock, amen, going to South Carolina uh, to do and be there with the family as we eulogize, as they eulogize, amen, and do the homecoming for Sister Flossie Matthews, amen? Amen, you'll be proud to know, amen, that uh, Sister Gamal is holding up, amen. She's been through a lot, she's holding up, and we continue to uh, ask prayer for her traveling grace and her arriving mercy. Uh, she's already sent a, sent a text uh, that her flight was canceled, Amen, from D.C. to uh, South Carolina. Uh, but we know that there's going to be a flight for her to get there, amen, sometime this evening. And we'll uh, be communicating with her, amen. So continue to pray uh, that God will strengthen the family, strengthen her, 
amen, as they go through this dark hour of their lives. Amen? Amen. Any other announcements or yes? <coughs> Amen, Mother Moore. Amen. So you see, we stand in the need of prayer, amen, because prayer changes things, amen, amen. It's been two weeks already. Lord have mercy. All right, all right, God bless you. All right, so now it's good to see you, and, and, and we know that you usually stay all summer. But as you grow up, you got things to do. And mom and dad come and get you, amen, and we can't hold on to you. Amen, but we, we, we're glad that you're here and we see you. Hey, amen, she is growing up. You ain't got no more babies. Amen. <laughs> but we love her, amen. We love her. All right, then, if all said and done, and heart, all hearts and minds are satisfied, let us stand that we may receive our benediction. Hallelujah. Most holy, gracious God, our Father, we thank you uh, for what you're doing. Father, we thank you for what you have done. Most of all, we thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we know that you're going to attend to those things and uh, uh, dispatch angels that have been uh, uh, waiting to hear your word and uh, to get your directions to go see about those on our prayer lips. Father, we need you now. Mother Moore needs you now. Mother Cook's family needs you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch her body. Touch Mother Moore's body. All those that are sick and shut in, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand on your word. That those, the Heavenly Father, who loves you and those, the Heavenly Father, who lives by your word, God, will forevermore not be in death but be in life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, sanctify the doctors, sanctify the medicine, sanctify the nurses. Let them realize that whatever they're doing, that they are handling precious cargo. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you'll allow the balm of Gilead flow from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Let them have a testimony and a witness that the Lord brought me out in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for confident grace upon the Matthew and Gamble family in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them know, dear Father, that Mama is not gone, that Mama is there in your hands, that Mama, the Heavenly Father, is sitting around the throne of God waiting for them to join her. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that she's a child of yours. And, Father, you know, dear Heavenly Father, exactly what you were doing when you called her name on the road. So, Father, keep us in your care, strengthen the family, and let them know, dear God, that all is well in the arms of Jesus. Give us traveling grace and arriving mercy, O oh God. We thank you, dear Father, for our going out and our coming in. Have thine own way. Thank you, God, for our visitors today. 
Help them, the Heavenly Father, along the way. Let us share and shower love on them. Let them know that even though uh, they are uh, new among us, they're still family. And they're still children of God. Lord, we thank you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Let the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, let it rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forever. It is in Jesus' magnificent name we do pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise.